So in today's lesson, we're going to be going over how Andy Summers uses triads, and we're going to be going over a really, really famous riff that is constructed with only triads, and I want you to comment down below what riff it is when you hear it. So I will not tell you what the name of the riff is because, you know, I just want people to comment. So freaking comment the name of the riff down below because you know that you know what it is. So, you know, drop a comment, help out with the algorithm and all that good stuff. Okay, so below you have the first half of it tabbed out. And I will show you the second half of it in a second. First in this riff, we have actually a G minor triad. Now, this is going to be a really good demonstration of why you need to learn your triads because if you know your triads in all keys, all inversions, you would be able to learn this riff like virtually instantaneously because it's just gonna be a bunch of stuff that you know already. So we'll go over it and then I wanna explain a couple other things because even though there's triads here, you're gonna see that there's actually some hidden seventh chords going on which are really cool. So first thing we have is a G minor triad. And this is a G minor triad in first inversion. And all you have to do is literally fret all of the third fret, the top three strings, and you actually get that G minor triad. So I know it's in first inversion, by the way, because the third of the chord is on the bottom. We're gonna get more into that in a second. So we have a G minor triad, and then it's gonna go to a D minor triad. Now you see there it says D minor over F. So I'm actually not playing F as the lowest note. The lowest note I'm playing here is actually an A, but if you listen to the recording, you will hear Sting, the bass player, you will hear him playing an F in the bass. So there's a D minor triad, but there is an F going on in the bass. And this kind of combines to make a nice little chord that we're gonna talk about in a second. So this is a D minor in second inversion, by the way, because a root position D minor triad has D, F, and A in it, but here the A is the lowest note. So this would be a second inversion D minor, okay? Then we're gonna move this exact same shape up all the way over here. And we're gonna have the seventh fret of the third string, eighth fret of the second string, sixth fret of the first string. And this is going to be a G minor triad now. So just move it up. By the way, in both of these, the root of the triad is the middle string of the shape, AKA the second string. So this is a D right here. And then this is a G, the note that I'm playing with my ring finger. So we play that. And then we're gonna go down to an F over D. Again, if you see all those slash chords there, I'm not actually playing those bass notes. So actually, let's go back here one second. This G minor of E flat in the bass. So if I played the E flat, which I'm not going to if I was playing just like Andy Summers is in the recording, but if you combine the chord that the guitar is playing with the bass, you get the G minor over E flat. And then you're going to have an F and there's a D in the bass that Sting's playing. But this is an F, it's just an F major triad that Andy Summers is playing. This is a second inversion, by the way. These are both second inversions. Second inversion G minor, second inversion F major triad. And now we're gonna move to the next part, which is going to be a C minor triad. No other fancy schmancy stuff going on in the bass. Sting is actually playing a C in the bass this time. And this is simply a good old root position C minor triad. Fifth fret of the third string, fourth fret of the second string, third fret of the first string. And then there's gonna be something really cool here. So we got this F sus four. So for those of you who might not know, a sus four chord is simply a triad where you take the third and you move it up 
a half step if it's normally supposed to be a major chord or you move it up a whole step if it's supposed to be a minor chord normally. So normally in this key, by the way, this is the key of B flat major, okay, or G minor. I know there's no B flat major chords here yet. There are later in the song, which we're not gonna go over. But normally this chord actually should be an F major. Actually, you remember before there was an F major chord we played, right? But it had a D in the bass. This should be an F major, which if we played it in this area, it'd be an F major first inversion with this A here in the second fret of the third string. But instead, we have a B flat note on the third fret of the third string. Move that third up, and we get a sus4 chord. So a lot of times you can sub out any chord that you want in a key, you can just sub it out with a sus4 chord if you think that's a sound that you want and you think that sounds cool. And then there's just some doublings here. So you got the third fret of the fourth string, third fret of the second string, and then you're gonna bar down the first fret of the second and then the first string. So kind of these two blocks of chords here. Very cool shape. And you just move that up. So you notice here, like I was saying before, you can use this as a sub. So before, in the beginning of the riff, there was a G minor triad. But now we're going back to G, but instead of G minor, he turns it into G sus4. G sus4 is still a triad, by the way. There's still actually you know, three unique notes in this chord. There is a C, a D, and a G in it. Or if I arranged it in a root position, it'd be G, C, D. So there's two Gs. If you notice, this note on the fourth string and this note on the first string are just octave doublings of each other. Okay? So that's how to play the riff. And now we're going to analyze it just a little bit further because there's going to be some really cool stuff going on that I want to show you. All right. So first of all, we're going to start with this first chord here, the G minor in first inversion. So normally a G minor should have in root position, it should have the notes G, B flat and D. And this is the root, the flat three and the five. Of course, if you're familiar with triads, you should know that a minor triad has a flat three in it. It's like you take a major triad, you lower the third by a half step. So like a G major triad would have G, B, and D, but this is G minor, so it's G, B, flat, and D. So we know that this is first inversion because you see the notes are not in order like they are from one, three to five. It actually has B flat as the lowest note. So we know that that is a first inversion chord. So now the next chord that we are going to, by the way, if you uh, know, second inversion is when the fifth is on the bottom. So if the one or the root is on the bottom, it's root position. If the third is on the bottom, that is first inversion. And if the fifth is on the bottom, that is called second inversion, okay? So speaking of second inversion, we're gonna go to a second inversion D minor chord, which has the notes. It normally would have the notes D, F, and A in it. But as you can see, the A is on the bottom, so we know it's an inversion. And if you remember what I said a second ago, you know that it is second inversion, because whenever the fifth is on the bottom, we call that second inversion. But we need to sidetrack here one second, because if you remember earlier, okay, I said that there was actually an F in the bass. Now you would think, oh, wait a second. Doesn't that make it actually first inversion when Sing's playing F in the bass? So let's see for one second here, what happens if we have F in the bass and then we have actually an A and then we have a D and then we have another F. So here's the thing that I got to tell you about, okay? When you're combining the triads that you're playing with the note that the bass player is playing, guess what? The note that the bass player is playing, if the note is a big fat F, boom, guess what? Our ears are actually gonna hear that as the root of the chord, 
okay? They're not going to hear that as like the third of a D minor chord because that note is so low and the bass player is playing it. Now everything that we play on top of it is sort of relating back to that bass note. And that's why when you're thinking about chords, and especially when you start getting more advanced chords, a lot of times it's as simple as taking like some other triad and putting it over a bass note that turns into a new chord. So all that's to say is that we actually have to treat this F like it's the root because the bass note, again, is so low that takes precedence over everything. So F is the root, then A is the third, the major third, and then D is the sixth, and then F is another root again. So we have this very interesting chord, which has the root, it has a major third, it has a sixth, and it has a one in it. So I would actually just call this chord F6, okay? So a major six chord is actually what's happening here. Even though Andy Summers is just playing a D minor triad, that's one thing to learn is that if you play a D minor triad, but the bass player is playing an F, it's actually going to sound like an F6 chord. It's a very common sound. So if I add the bass note artificially myself underneath, you hear how that doesn't really sound like a minor chord, does it? It sounds like a very nice, chill, like major chord type of sound. So this is one thing that's so cool is that once you know triads, you don't have to just play a D minor chord with a D in the bass as the bass player is playing D. No, there's other notes that you can play it over. And then you think, okay, how does this triad that I'm playing combine with the bass note that's being played by the bass player? I hope that that makes sense. So actually in reality, even though Andy Summers is playing a D minor triad, we're really hearing an F6 chord, okay? So let's keep going now. We're gonna take this whole shape here and we're gonna move it up right over here. And now we're gonna have another G minor triad, right? But it's in a different inversion. So if you remember, I said that if the fifth is on the bottom, which you can see there, the fifth is in the bottom. Remember, go up here. G is the root, B flat is the flat three, and D is the fifth. D is on the bottom, so therefore it is a G minor in second inversion. However, if you remember, there was actually an E flat in the bass by the time we get to this part of the riff. So we have to think about how does the E flat bass note compare or relate to this G minor chord. So let's figure it out. So we have E flat in the bass, and then we have D, and then we have G, and then we have B flat. So same thing here, if Sting is playing an E flat in the bass, and then now I play the rest of this chord, it's actually possible to play an E flat in the bass and play the rest of this chord. First of all, just off the, you're using your ears, does that sound like a minor chord to you? That sounds like a minor chord, but does it sound like a minor chord now when I put E flat in the bass? To me, I don't think it does. So let's figure out what kind of chord is this. So E flat, we got to treat that as the one actually because that is the bass note. Again, whatever is the bass note, almost all the time you have to treat it as the one, okay? So in this case, we definitely are. There's some cases where you don't necessarily need to treat it as the one, but we're not going to get into that right now. So E flat would be the one. D is actually the major seventh, okay? So E flat going up to D is a major seventh interval. G is going to be the major third. And then B flat is going to be the fifth. Oh, wait a second. There's a one, a three, a five, and then a seven. So actually, guess what, guys? This chord 
is actually E flat major seventh. Okay, so those of you who know about seventh chords, a seventh chord has to have a root, third, fifth, and a seventh. Now, the order that they appear here is a little bit different. It's root, seventh, third, fifth, but they're still all there, the root, third, fifth, and the seventh. It's actually an E flat major seven chord. So if you actually saw that chord symbol, G minor over E flat, it's really actually just an E flat major seven chord. So isn't that freaking sick how Andy Summers is, he's just playing a G minor chord, but combined with what the bass player is doing, it actually makes this more sophisticated chord. It's like sophisticated on two levels. Number one, it's an inversion. Whenever you hear an inversion, that's already going to sound a little bit different than just your standard root position triad. But then the way he's actually playing it over a different bass note, there's not a G in the bass. If there was a G in the bass, it would be much different. Like, it's a totally different vibe having G in the bass than E flat in the bass. Okay, so we're almost done. We're going to keep going. So now after that, we have actually an F triad. And you notice he's just going to the closest available F triad. So it's still actually the same inversion. In root position, F would be F, A, and C. But we have this C, F, and A. So normally it would be F, a, C, that'd be the one, three, and five. So this is an F chord. So we have C as the lowest note. So what inversion is this? Second, second inversion, right? Because this is the lowest note. C is the fifth. But wait a second. Oh yeah, there was actually a D in the bass. So D, and then we had C, and then F, and then A. So let's see what kind of chord that actually gives us. So remember, if D is in the bass, first of all, let's hear what it sounds like. So here's your F major triad. But now I'm going to put D in the bass. Whoa. Sounds different. Does that sound like a major chord now? That sounds like a major chord without the bass note, but now D in the bass. Hmm. Let's see what kind of chord that is. So, D, we got to think of that as the one, because that's a note that's in the bass. C would actually be the flat seven. F would be the flat three. And A would be the fifth. So, that is a D minor seven chord. So, actually, even though Andy Summers is just playing an F major triad, he knows that Sting's playing that D in the bass. And therefore, it's actually a D minor seven. So it's very interesting. We have all this stuff going on. If I add it in the bass note, it would sound something like this. And then we're gonna keep going. So then we have a C minor triad. And you notice there's something really cool that happens here that I talk about all the time. It's called voice leading. So he doesn't just go to any random C minor triad. He actually goes to the closest possible C minor triad that exists. So the way that you do this is thinking, okay, what are the notes in this F major triad? What are the notes in the C minor triad I want to go to? And how do I get there moving the least amount? So actually, a C minor triad has C, E flat, and G in it. So he's thinking, okay, I have C, F, and A. How do I get to C minor in the most efficient voice leading way possible? So first of all, if there are any notes that are the same, keep them the same. Well, guess what? Look, there's a C in this F major chord. There's also a C in the C minor chord. So let's just keep that note the same. We're not going to move it anywhere. So you think, okay, what about this F? Is there an F in the C minor chord? No, there's not. So I'm going to move this down actually to E flat. I could move it up to G, but then you'll see then there's nowhere for this A to go. So we're actually going to move it to the closest note that is not going to take up another space for the A. 
And it's going to be this E flat here. And finally, we just move this A down a whole step to G. So the voice leading here is very cool. You just literally take these two notes and move them both down two frets. And now all of a sudden, you transform that chord into a C minor chord. So that's one thing that's really, really cool too, is that you actually see that earlier too when you go from the G minor, the first two chords, the G minor to this D minor. That's also perfect voice leading. That is the closest possible D minor chord that you can find to this G minor chord, okay? So there's so much cool stuff going on here. We got voice leading, we got uh, different triads over bass notes that are combining to make seventh chords and make major six chords and all kinds of stuff like that. Very cool. So last thing, of course, by the way, we don't have to worry about, thankfully, a different bass note. This is just a C minor with C in the bass. It's just a straight up root position C minor. Kind of nice, right? To counter that every once in a while. So then we're going to go down to this F sus chord, and we're going to add another note there. This one's actually four notes. Again, like you could just take this F out here, and that's also a uh, an F sus chord. Same thing. It just has a doubling, and this is a very common thing to do with triad. Sometimes just double one of the notes in the triad. So that F sus. And that's actually not the perfect voice leading <laughs> from the C minor chord, but that's okay. We're not worried about that. We're worried about playing stuff that sounds cool. We use the things like voice leading and inversions, blah, 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 when we want them to sound a certain way. So we don't always have to follow all the rules perfectly, right? We break them and we follow them as needed and as wanted to make something that sounds cool. So you probably just heard this and that melody too, that melody is really good. That and then it's gonna move up a whole step to G sus. So there's not too much to explain there. You just go in from an F sus to a G sus. So if you wanna learn how to master the guitar fretboard so you can know all your triads and all inversions and all keys all over the entire neck so that you can come up with your own freaking awesome riffs just like Andy Summers and on top of that people use them for soloing and much much more make sure you head on over to jamsville.com right now and get your copy of the Jamsville GPS fretboard fundamentals course which will teach you exactly how to do just that also make sure you head on over to the Jamsville merch store the link in the description below get yourself a freaking awesome jamsville t-shirt you know you want one they fit great i love wearing them all over the place and the logo looks so cool absolutely freaking love it support the channel and on top of that have a cool piece of gear to wear whatever you're doing out in the world also check out my new song that's what you're hearing right now in the background it's called my divine it's available on spotify and all major streaming platforms whatever is your favorite platform to listen on make sure you click the link in the description below and you'll be able to find it right there you might be able to hear some of this triad stuff happening let me know in the comments if you do Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, really helps out with the algorithm, and drop a comment also helps out with the algorithm. I really appreciate you all. Thanks for stopping by, and until next time, listen, learn, and jam.